we're doing something a little bit different today. I'm here with my friend Corey, and uh, you guys have seen him in some other videos, like the uh, the abandoned building with the 318 and some of that stuff. Well, this is his new ride. <laughs> we're gonna get into the world of demolition derby a little bit. And before all the haters say, "Oh man, you're destroying a classic," this thing's already a derby veteran. Okay, this is how he got it. Like, it's rolling scrap. There's no saving it. So, we might as well have some fun on the way to it becoming recycled into something coming from China. Right? Pretty much. That's how it is. <laughs> the, the Derby's tomorrow night at the New River Valley Fair. And uh, today, there's a thrash going on. So, especially all you guys uh, for the No Name Nationals have 67 days to go. They're a long way from running here, and the Derby's <laughs> tomorrow. All right, man, what do we have here? It's a 70, what is this thing, late 70s, early 80s, Ford LTD. Um, got rid of all Ford crap underneath the hood, so it'll actually run, and hopefully it'll get there tomorrow. Um, <laughs> 350 small block. Uh, turbo hydromatic 350 transmission. Now you just put a transmission in, that's what came out. Yeah, the last guy that owned this car or was running it, he completely burned it up. It's, it's junk. GM people, tell me more about that thing. I don't know much about GM transmissions. I was told it was a, it was a turbo hydromatic 350, but you can tell by the bell housing it's not. I don't know, really know what it is. Um, four bolt small block. Trying to get it, we was trying to use some alternative fuel in this one, but we just run out of time on it. So, um, alternative fuel. We're not going green here, guys. Don't, don't let me get next on it. Um, I thought it was going to be a hybrid. I mean, you know, we're looking for some batteries now, but Milwaukee's out of stock. Now this caught my eye. See, I don't know anything about derby cars. This is kind of cool. Tell me about this. Um. What, what, you talking about the tank? Okay. So, I really don't know. Um, I've never built a derby car. I know nothing about derby stuff other than I've seen it all my life as a child at the fair. Um, I've been wanting to build one for many years, never had the time or the opportunity. Uh, one of the guys that, uh, at the shop Express the Mantras, found a car, watched a couple of YouTube videos, and here we are. Sometime you guys watching this video, he and I just about did something with a derby car years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's some pictures of it. And that'd be a good topic for a live sometime. So yeah. <laughs> remind me on a live and maybe we can talk about that. <laughs> Anyway, this came to fruition. So, talking to the guy, he's like, look, you got some heavy hitters up there. They're going to smoke you if you don't bring some, some guns to the fight. Um, I don't want to name no names because I don't know who's friend, who's foe right now in this industry. Um, but I was basically told that they will let this fly in this class. So, Well, is this the way you cool it? I'm guessing. Well, we pulled the radiator. You can see we had a radiator sitting over there in it, and uh, we was told that we could put a water tank in it, and here we go. So, so what do you do? You pack this thing full of ice water? We're going to do something with it. We ain't too off the shore yet. Like I said, we're okay. still learning as we go on this. All right. I see, but that's cool because you're learning as you go. You're jumping in, doing it, and you're learning as you go. Well, the bad thing about it, though, is, is you know, people's like, well, I'll go get an old jump car out of the weeds and, and smash the windows out of it and go, down, go derby, which... A lot of people do do that, and that's fine, but there's a lot of money that gets spent when you get into the big class of stuff to make it where you actually have a fighting chance. There's a lot of things to building these cars. Like, obviously, that's not the bumper it came with. And there's also, there's different classes, which I always thought you had, you run a full-size class, and that's what you had, but, you know, you have what they call a wire-up class, and you can see that this car was previously what they call a wire-up car. And there's places where it was wired together. Uh, with this one now having the studs through it, uh, it's what they call a weld up class. Weld up class. Here we go. You're running. You're running a welded on front bumper. We're, we're running this stuff. Uh, see what you build. We call the cage in it. 
This is a harder hitting car. This is the one that, you know, you're going to stand up and watch. It's ain't a four-cylinder car. It's ain't a front-wheel drive class. This is this is what we used to see when we was kids growing up, and this was the most disturbing. This, this is what keeps the chiropractors in business, right? Yeah, this is yeah, this is where you see a lot more handicap accessible people come on board. Now, the front suspension here, uh, how well do you expect that to hold up? So, the Ford front ends, from what I've gathered in the last few weeks of uh, learning about demolition derby, is not as desirable as a GM because it has more moving steering parts uh, than a GM front clip does. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right. I don't know, it's just what I've been learning. You guys in the comments that know about derbies, you know, educate us, let us know. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're learning here. So you can see here what happened. They ran, obviously there's no rear brakes on the car. The guy that was running this car had front brakes on it. He got hit, it severed the brake line, he had no brakes. Um, so we done away with this, um, and we're actually running a driveline brake on this one. So you have one single brake on the rear drive shaft? Yes. Because at the, at the rear of the drive shaft? Yeah, it's there at the, at the rear end. It's basically, it's a four bolt rotor. It's on a flange style. Um, you're running, I don't really like it. Uh, it's running a single piston caliper. I'm not crazy about that, but I will tell you, at the end of the night, I done told them that if the car holds up as we're supposed to, that rotor will be glowing red. Hmm. So, now this is just uh, 350 vacuum secondary, Holly four barrel. Nothing exotic. No. I think that belt alignment will last for what they want to do. We got, which we don't have it all on here yet, but there's a pulley protector down the bottom. You can see that. We've got a whole engine cradle that goes up here. That's why all this right here is loose at the moment. Uh, it kind of protects the front end. It'll also protect the water pump pulley in case something does happen here. It comes back on it. It can't go into the, the pulley system. Um, Look at these studs, too. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you're expecting to be in a car wreck, you do things accordingly, right? Yep. Now you guys have reinforced a lot of this yourself. It was already a derby car, but you're taking it. So we cut it. We cut a lot of making stuff. Making improvements. Out. So when we got the car, uh, we got this car 14 days ago. It had been in the spring derby in Patrick County. Uh, for whatever reason, the guy wanted to sell it. He posted it on Marketplace. I found it. He went down after work one night with a rollback, picked it up, brought it in. So this door had, got, had been hit. They had small diameter C channel, and it, it actually broke here, and it was sitting out to here when the car come in. This whole door was sitting about right along here. Um, now, by, by the way, when you see this really heavy channel in here, this is truck frame, because Corey, he owns and operates a truck shop, so they use what they're familiar with. You know, if we'd have had to go out and buy everything that's been used on this thing, there's a lot of stuff that we had to buy, obviously, but um, we're talking several thousand dollars in, in steel and stuff like that. Not saying we haven't used some virgin steel, but obviously it was cheaper for me to use a piece of truck frame out of a truck that we had replaced the rail in versus going out here and buying all this C-channel and tubing and, and all this stuff and trying to buy new. Um, according to my rules guy, this is legal. Ain't made through tech yet, so we don't know. And there's your roll cage, or your roll bar, rather. <laughs> just run it on the outside. So, we well, actually- What is that frame from? Just scrap out of your pile? It, well, it was actually out of a Peterbilt uh, road tractor. Um, <laughs> the frame cracked in one spot, and so the insurance company paid us to replace the rail, and so we found a good purpose for the rail. The interior layout in here is interesting. Kind of walk us through the controls on this thing. So the steering sector in this one is basically what you'd see in any, what I would consider any kind of race car, or race application or whatever. Uh, it's got a removable steering wheel on it. Um, you can see how, how it goes down through. It goes straight to the box. There's no universals in it. There's nothing like that. Um, you got your brake over there. Uh, you can actually tell 
maybe from there, maybe you can't, but we're still running the actual brake line to the uh, the rotor there on the drive line. Check that out. So you don't run a pedal on it at all? Well, there is a pedal. You, you can't tell the pedal, but it's on the other side of the, oh, okay. of the little master cylinder. Um, then of course you got your throttle pedal. Um, I don't think people always realize how modified these cars really are. And that's kind of what I wanted to show here. Yeah. Um, biggest thing about this is kind of what I've been stressing or with the rules people, you know, is driver safety. You know, the car's been compromised. It's a, it's a pre-run car. Um, anytime you run a pre-run car, you have to kind of rethink some of the safety in it. You want to have fun, but at the same day, you don't want to have a guy laid up in the hospital here. And who is the guy laid up in the hospital? Right over here? Yeah. We'll talk to him later. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, we don't want anybody getting hurt. There's transmission you guys put in. Yep. Your transmission controller, which I guess that's the shifter, is probably one of your biggest things. Um, the way that shifter is made is there's a lock on the side of it that locks it in the park. So right now it's in the park. So when you pull this out and move it back, so when you're going from reverse to forward, you can't jam it into a park accidentally. Um, that's one of the biggest things. You know, it's just little things like that. that you know, that, that I guess you learn or whatever about this, this sport, I guess. Now you're, you're probably, are you even using second gear hardly? I would say probably as hard as he's going to be going from reverse to forward. I don't know. You'll even know what gear you're even in other than forward or reverse. All right. What do you have on your switch panel here? So you got your main kill switch here, obviously. Uh, just push button is your starter. Then you've got, uh, we had electric fans on. Obviously, we don't need them now. We've got a fuel pump. And then our trans cooler sitting back here. Um, he had a trans cooler in it. It was just like a free air flowing style. Uh, we got that one in and it obviously has a fan on it where it'll push some air through it and hopefully keep that trans cool. Is this the factory seat? Yeah. Uh, as you can see that frame, that rail we put in there, we've still got one more piece to put in there, kind of protect his leg in case something comes through there. But, like I said, at the end of the day, um, you you know you want to be safe. I mean, speaking of that, you gonna trim off those self tappers or just? Uh... I mean, you know, we still got what ten hours to go, twelve hours to go. Before we yeah, have to be there. That's, so that's all right. You got plenty of time, yeah, right? Got plenty of time to do some trimming on that. The other thing I was gonna tell you, which we should have kind of videoed it, but this whole side was pushed plumb in. Uh, we actually had to take torch, blow holes in the doors. We actually chained the other side off to a, uh, about a 40,000 pound excavator at the shop and hooked the chain through it and we actually pulled the side back out. So it's kind of a rolling. That's a normal shop. Tuesday for you. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's really <laughs> nothing abnormal. So. Um, now, when I saw this, and I'll drop a picture of it in here, there were some, you had some tires in the back. Yeah. That was just a bunch of extra parts and stuff when, when the guy sold us the car. Um, I think the tires are, what are the tires? They're basically Bobcat tires. Oh, it's a Bobcat tire. Okay, yep. I didn't know that. Yep. 16 inch wheel? No, that's a 15. 15, okay. Yep. I didn't realize a Bobcat ran anything that would fit on a Yeah, and evidently that's truck a, wheel. That's, I think it's a Dodge style wheel. And you can see where they re-drilled it to fit that nine inch forward. Huh. Um, there, like I so said, there's a lot that goes into it that people don't don't realize. Now, are you putting a factory bumper back on the front? No, no. The front, the front is that's that. We may still even change the rear bumper out if we have time. Right now, we're trying to get all the functionality stuff taken care of. We still have some more welding to do on the frame and on some other components. Are you are you doing anything on the back to change it? Well, that's what we was talking about, the back bumper. You know, there's a good possibility if we have time, we're going to change it out. What about this, where this is folded down? Is that strategic? Yeah, because everybody wants this kind of like pushed in and this, and that kind of helps when you start hitting it. It kind of helps start folding that rear end up because you don't want it to go down. Then it looks like a motor grater whenever you're going down the road. So. <laughs> this is actually some of the old... This, 
to compare, this is actually what was in the car when we got it. If, oh, wow. So if this compares to what we put back oh, in the car. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So. Um, this thing might make many derbies into the future. I'm hoping to get, you know, one or two out of it. But you got to think when you're a new kid on the block and you're in a big boy class and you don't have no friends out there, you might make some enemies pretty quick. So. Oh, yeah. we That we know. <laughs> You guys, you got this 14 days ago, right? Yeah. So this is a 15 day build. This is, this is day and you also got 15. Think. You also got to think, um, this has been evenings. We don't get over till six. We stay over here till nine or 10. Uh, Friday night, we got here at 6.45, 7.15. Me and another boy had run out and run the heavy wrecker. He was in another state. I was here local. He didn't get touched that night. Take a look underneath. Oh, well, there's the brakes. If you want, we can raise it up if you want to look at it. Sure. Yeah, see, I'm not used to things like lifts. Put that button over for me right up on it. What does it say on the top? Well, that was the boy I just had before. Kobe? Yeah. So I guess you got a Duke boy in through the windows in this. Oh, yeah. I guess that uh, goes to say there aren't any 400 pound derby drivers, right? Correct. <laughs> That's why I'm not going to be in it. <laughs> uh, ventilated floor pans. Yeah, I mean, Whoa. It's, this car's junk. I'm surprised how much rust it has. Yeah, it's 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 junk. Floor <laughs> pans are gone. So we've, we got a message under here for a competitor, apparently. We don't, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's competitor pass. Y'all didn't put that on there. Nah, it's been there a long time, obviously. Yeah. So this is the brakes. Yeah. And uh, now you've done, have you redone this? This was like this already? Nah, or is this something this you is, set up? There's, there's some stuff on this car that, that, like I said, we've researched, learned, played people in places you can actually order derby parts from. It's kind of unreal that, there's that much out there, but there really is. So when you order this kit, there's a bracket that goes on this nine inch and you can get it for GM rears, um, Ford rears. Of course, this is a nine inch, any of the big, you know, in this class, you can actually take this nine inch out and you can put a 14 bolt, you can put a 10 and a quarter and any three quarter oh, wow. one ton floater rear and you want to put under it. I mean, it, the rules get pretty wild. Um, which at that point you would change it over and go to a leaf spring setup and get rid of the coils. Now, are these coils, you think they're going to be a, a weak point in this, if you had to guess? Or? No, I don't really think so. We've, of course, we've still got some more welding and stuff to do, which that was what our plan was today, was mainly be focusing on welding. Um, we got some patches to put in the frame. Uh, you're allowed four patches. Um, and this car front. was a total rust bucket. Yeah, I mean, but the, the cool thing about it is, and you can look at it, the frame is almost immaculate on this frame. It's still good. Yep, so it's perfect for this. But this this setup right here, going back to the brake, everything from the rotor back to this bracket come in the kit, including this brake line here. Um, your dry shaft deal, this is actually um, a front dry shaft out of a forward three quarter see, ton, one ton truck. I was looking at that. I was looking at the telescopic drive shaft. So what do you have up here? Oh, I see, you're supposed to be wondering. So it was already put together one other time um, and the old tubes laying right over there on the floor. So we cut it apart, took this, of course this, this spline slid up in the transmission and we adapted it, made it fit this. 
it's not balanced. It ain't perfect, but. For the speed you're going? Yeah, I mean, they they actually make, you can buy a telescopic drive line for these, this application if you want to. Um, we figured this would be the first one. We would just kind of build our own and see how it goes. So looking under here, you got a magnet on the oil pan. It is interesting. I mean, I'm not used to how these are built at all, and I keep seeing interesting little things. Mm -hmm. You've got lots of little places you've reinforced this car, it looks like. And we've still got some more places to go. The the coolest one, I would say coolest, but one of the most unusual is the motor mounts in the car. So, you know, if you if you do get hit up in there, it's not gonna tear the block apart. It's just either gonna shear the bolts or, or bust that other mount off. Uh, I've wondered about that on these yep. cars, how you protect that. Yep. And you do it with special mounts. Yep. I'd never thought about that. Yep. Uh, how the, how, cause I figured there was always a, a chance of that happening, like breaking the water jack or something to block as hard as these hits are. Yep. And, and now I know. And now this is not guaranteeing that it's not going to, you're not going to bust a bale house and you're still busting a motor. I mean, anything's possible. Um, but, you know, you don't know until you try, I guess. All right, what we got left to do to this thing today? Um, I was gonna get this, this tank mounted, get it plumbed up to accept everything on the motor, get it secured. Um, we got some more welding to do, some more bracing on the steering stuff on this car. I've got the front end bolt buttoned up, I think, on the front of it. Um, we gotta put expanded metal over the, the driver's side of the windshield. See we're going to break tubing back to the caliper. Uh, we have some welding to do on the back of the frame. We still have to notch the frame. Um, we got to mount the fuel cell. We've got most of the fuel line ran. Fuel pumps wired up. Um, we still have to build some bump stops for the rear end. And I'm sure there's some other stuff we're probably forgetting somewhere, but. And one thing I'll mention here, because, you know, you, you be very humble about it and saying that this is your first go around with a derby car, but Corey's actually an accomplished truck puller. And uh, this is not his first go around with building cars and competitive stuff. Um, if I can find a little bit of a photo video of that, I'll splice it in. But uh, he is used to building stuff and having time frames and going out and competing. This is just a, a new avenue for it. So, you know, I got into tractor pulling when I was 13, 14 years old. Rebuilt my first tractor motor on my own at 15 or 16. Um, got into truck pulling when I was 18, 19. Won a points championship in 16 down North Carolina, PPL series. Um, so, I mean, I've always been around quote unquote motorsports, been around running stuff the way you ain't supposed to run it, I guess. And this is just something that I've always wanted to do. And um, just, you know, time to finally put something together, have some fun with it and see how it goes. <laughs> It's 10.30 at night, it's 8 before the derby. Wind and that's still easy to go in. Whatever home slice is welded in down there, I don't know what he's doing. And yet to fire it up. I've got faith, what about you? I got some, I just don't know what it is. <laughs> this is gonna be great. Nothing like making a windshield out of expanded steel at midnight at a shop in a residential area.
I put sparks in the roll off container, the roll off container company may not like it. Aren't you the roll off container company? Sorry, I'm supposed to ask that many questions. We are getting ready to see the biggest fireball, <laughs> and I am going to catch it. Somehow I knew I'd find you here cutting on something. Yeah. Still getting some plates ready to weld in. Reinforces the rear end. Still don't have the windshield on there. I see the boss man just rolled in. What, what? <laughs> All right, green flags in nine hours and change. Looks like you're well ahead of schedule. Oh, I'm like a phone call this morning. What time do we need to be there? I gave over around 4, 4.30. We'd be here about 7. I pulled up the bench button at 7.30 and said, yeah. I said, okay. <laughs> I guess we're all going to find out together, right? I, I guess, and, and I asked him, if you might come by and look at it. He said, what are you running? He said, why up for the first off? That's the first off. He said, oh, you ain't nothing to worry about. Whatever you got, it'll pass. Nice. All right, what, what is this? I didn't see this in the dark. Boys hauling veterinary services? And there's a star on the door where I don't know if it was an old cop car or somebody just put that there. You can barely see the remnants of the star. But anyway, tell us what this plate's doing here. I saw, uh, saw Caleb cutting that out this morning. Yeah, so this is what they call a hump plate. Um, I figured out what that was about 12 days ago, I guess. Um, so you can have this in here to kind of strengthen the hump of the frame up to give it strength against the compaction here and everything. And it keeps this wheel arch intact, keeps it from coming together. Um, here again, I'm not trying to knock nobody, but the rules are about as clear as muddy water. So we're, we're having to kind of guess and go and see how it works out. This is how I understand, how, you know, how it's supposed to be. So. And uh, style points for the washers. Since the car has no rear brakes uh, at the wheels and been replaced with a brake at the pinion, you put those on there to take up space where there was a brake drum. Yeah, it's a little cheaper knocking all the studs out of it and the and everything. So. 
Guys, you can put this car through a shredder and that will be the only recognizable piece to come out the other side. It's not going anywhere. I guarantee they're not going to Yeah, I believe they are going to not. <laughs> Is this called how to fail tech in one easy step? Follow us along for more easy, easy steps. This is how the pros get wheel lift clearance. <laughs> when uh, when you call your Mako uh, body shop and you tell them you got a demo day with the B2 in about two hours, and you don't want no damn green car, you want a blue one. Here you go, boys and squirrels. What do you think, Kevin? I think it's blue. Can I ask you a question? You're a professional uh, ism doing this. Do you think that's like the best uh, paint job you've ever done? 110%. Is that all you gonna give it 110? It's 110. Gotta leave some room for air. Here with Metal Carnage TV. I saw several of their cars out here in the field. These are the guys, and turns out they don't live very far from me. <laughs> what do you guys do? Uh, we run a YouTube channel through and Facebook of just filming demolition derbies up and down the East Coast, and we started a point series. So the ones that us of us that are more competitive and travel, that we have a champion at the end of the year for Virginia. I'm going to put a link to their channel below. And where are you guys located? We're out of Blacksburg, Virginia. Blacksburg, Virginia. They're only about eight miles from me. That's pretty cool. It's a small world sometimes. We're all over the world, and yet sometimes we're not that far apart. We wish you guys well. Uh, I'll have a link below. They can come and check you out. And uh, I'm excited. This is the first derby I've ever covered, so this will be fun. It's uh, hopefully be, be uh, if it's your first one seeing or covering. Oh, no. First one I've ever filmed. All right, we'll be filming too. We'll have uh, GoPros on some cars and we'll have someone filming on the side. Neat, so. neat, neat. This will yeah. be cool. This will be fun and different. We do pictures also. Yeah, we do do pictures. We got a girl standing, my cousin standing on the side over there. She takes <laughs> pictures during the heat so people can have their car and them inside of it. That's very cool. It's, it's, I'm, I'm really enjoying the people I'm meeting out here. This is a blast. I was about to say, it's some of the best people you ever meet. I haven't been to a derby where there's people that won't talk to you or friendly. Most of us up and down through here are friendly. They, they all seem like they're here to have fun, that's for sure. Oh, we're here to make junk. That's it. Send it. <laughs> Stand on the skinny pedal. <laughs> you got him no backup either. Yeah, for real. You need no backup. No reverse. Oh, it's good to them. This guy's this much traveling. Oh, okay. What do you think? Is it going to go off right? <laughs> no faith over there. I can smell the paint off this car. This car, this car still smells like fumes. This is the sketchiest thing ever. So what are we doing here? We, we we need ether to get it to start. So we've punched a hole in the air filter and come out with a piece of windshield washer hose. 
and it comes. <laughs> so we've got a hard plumbed bottle of starting fluid. Yeah, good thing. Look, I done lost it now. Yeah, that's the only one we got. Last in the market. Here we go. Tape it on there. God, you covered me in ether. Most people line the body panels before they go. It's optional. I'll be fine. Four people refueling this car. Maybe I should have grabbed the other can. Alcohol. I guarantee he's got a fuel block. Got a kinked fuel hose down here. Having to hold the fuel I'll hose see. straight with I'll a pair of pliers. Barely. What about the side gallon bit? That'll be enough to run. Okay. Okay. They coming for you. Start picking it up out of it. Alright, it's chaos time now. Uh, driver's beating is over. Green flag drops here in a few minutes. These guys painted this car, what, 90 minutes ago? Yeah, I mean, the paint, you can still smell. Everybody's kind of talking about they're getting high off paint fumes, so. There's a, you've got a nice contraption to make sure it starts, either starts or performs a cremation out here on the fairgrounds one. One way or another, people's gonna know we was here. I, I don't know if it's good or bad, but. So again, all you guys preparing for the no-name nationals, these guys show you it can be done. I did, He's excited, not because of all the derby action, but because of the camel.
If you got trophy or prize money coming, we're paying off over at the weight trailer where you signed in. The weight trailer where you signed in is where the trophy and prize money will be uh, distributed. What do you think? Boys, all right. This car ain't tore up. We'll be back. It's got, it's got some character marks there on her now. <laughs> the car doesn't look any different than when you rolled it out here. <laughs> A couple of scratches of blue paint's gone. Well, that we are. A little tug, we'll drive them and put her back on the truck. this mess of an endeavor here. Just leave it all away. I'm not orderly like you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, what are we going to say about this sucker? It's junk. <laughs> want, want to be on YouTube? Want to be a clickbait thumbnail? <laughs> Just asking. We'll figure it out. <laughs> the shit we'll do for content. 